Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. Afib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's segment, we're going to be talking about triggers for atrial fibrillation. Now, in a previous segment, I discussed what are the causes of the long-term condition of atrial fibrillation. But in this segment, I'm going to be talking about things can, that can actually exacerbate or trigger an episode of atrial fibrillation. Now, some of these triggers don't apply to everybody. Um, some of this involves you needing to be a detective to, with your own atrial fibrillation to know what more commonly triggers off your atrial fibrillation so you know better what to avoid. So what are some common triggers for atrial fibrillation? Number one I would say is, is fatigue and sleep depri deprivation. Uh, when you're not sleeping well, uh, there's a lot of stress hormones that get released, your body feels kind of ragged up, sometimes you're drinking more caffeine because you're sleep deprived and all of this can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. So, Good sleeping habits are essential to trying to minimize episodes of atrial fibrillation. Number two would be getting sick. Getting sick for any type of uh, reason, whether that be a, a viral illness, uh, can certainly trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation. However, I more commonly see this actually when patients are in the hospital, when people are in the hospital with more significant illness, uh, whether that's a, a pneumonia or even uh, a gastroenteritis or an infection on their leg. Uh, when they're more seriously ill and in the hospital, I very commonly see episodes of atrial fibrillation that get triggered. Uh, your body is under a straight of, state of stress when you're, when you're sick. And so those stress type hormones can also cause episodes of atrial fibrillation. Another thing that can trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation is just stress by itself. Stress by itself, whether that be stress at home, stress at work, can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. How does stress make that happen? So one, when people are, are in periods of stress, they may have also have these stress-related hormones released that can trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation. But also the habits that people have when they're stressed also can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. Those habits may be sleep deprivation, maybe you're not sleeping as much uh, when you're stressed, or there's more caffeine intake because you're tired, or more alcohol intake because you're stressed. And so all of those together can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. For women in particular, uh, there can be uh, events of atrial fibrillation that are triggered for during the menstrual cycle. I've had many patients, uh, female patients, that describe palpitations or episodes of atrial fibrillation during their menstrual cycle. But it's very inconsistent. It's not like it's always during the middle of your cycle or at the end of the cycle. It can be very uh, individualized. And so, but there definitely have been uh, plenty of women who have described to me changes in episodes of atrial fibrillation based on where they are on their menstrual cycle. Uh, now, next thing that can trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation is exercise. Now, there may be patients out there who clearly see that a certain type of exercise triggers their atrial fibrillation. And the tricky part about figuring this all out is because Exercise is actually healthy for you and in general it is recommended that if you have atrial fibrillation that you should exercise, you should try to lose weight. And so exercise for you is always good, but it's always need to be monitored, okay? You need to be kind of careful when you exercise to try to figure out where your own individual tolerances are. Uh, usually start off slow with things that are low impact and build up as you are able to be able to do. Certainly wouldn't go from not exercising to do very high intensity exercise in the in the first in the first go get. Uh, also, heart rate monitors, whether that's a Fitbit or Apple Watch, have been very useful for people to monitor their exercise, uh, monitor their heart rate uh, to help try to prevent episodes of atrial fibrillation while exercising. And obviously, when you're exercising, making sure that you are hi staying hydrated is an important tip as well. Next thing that can trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation is over-the-counter uh, supplements, particularly over-the-counter cold medications. A lot of these over-the-counter cold medications contain uh, stimulants in them, especially if they have a, a D in part of the name, like a, a Sudafed D. You know, that D is a, stands for a decongestant. Uh, and that's usually some type of stimulant uh, which can kind of rev your body up and it makes you feel better when you're sick, but it can also stimulate your heart and cause episodes of atrial fibrillation. Another thing that can trigger episodes of AFib is alcohol. Uh, I've actually discussed it several times in past uh, videos and past articles how alcohol influences atrial fibrillation. Um, especially significant alcohol use, uh, binge drinking has been known to have a, be a significant risk factor for developing atrial fibrillation to the point that it has its own term. It's called holiday heart when people have significant alcohol usage and then lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. But in some patients, even just a small amount of alcohol, even one or two drinks, can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. 
in general, I recommend to my patients that a small amount of alcohol, one or two drinks, is usually okay as long as it's not a clear trigger for your atrial fibrillation. If you clearly take one drink and you can tell that you have episodes of, of atrial fibrillation, then you should abstain alcohol completely. But low, small amounts are usually okay. Next thing that can trigger atrial fibrillation is caffeine. Now caffeine as a trigger for AFib has actually uh, been something that's been controversial over the years. Um, for many years prior, uh, if anybody had atrial fibrillation, it would be recommended to completely avoid all caffeine. And then as time went on, it was realized that, well, you know, some amounts of caffeine are safe. And there's actually was even some study that showed that small, caffeine, small amounts of caffeine can actually be beneficial for atrial for atrial fibrillation. And so I overall, similar to alcohol, I recommend that to my patients that caffeine, coffee, sodas is okay in small amounts as long as it's not clearly a trigger. Uh, there are again some patients that have told me, you know what, if I drink one coffee, I drink one soda, I'm going to get an episode of atrial fibrillation. So in those cases, I do recommend people to completely abstain from caffeine. But in most patients, a small amount of caffeine is not going to trigger an episode of atrial fibrillation and perfectly acceptable to do. Uh, next thing that can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation is dehydration. Uh, dehydration is a very common uh, trigger for atrial fibrillation and sort of kind of brings together some of the other points that I brought on before. Things like caffeine, dehydration, stress, you know, all the, some of the things that lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation is actually the dehydration. Caffeine and alcohol, for example, are powerful diuretics and then if you're not eating or drinking enough water to supplement, you can become dehydrated. So any type of dehydration uh, can lead to episodes of atrial fibrillation. Next thing that can trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation are recreational drugs. Um, even Things like marijuana can uh, stimulate your heart. Uh, obviously, more uh, illicit drugs such as uh, cocaine or stimulant, medic, uh, stimulant types of drugs also kind of rev up your heart and can bring episodes of atrial fibrillation. There are also some evidence that increased air pollution can cause uh, episodes of atrial fibrillation. There have been some data showing that when cities, when they have days of increased pollution, they get more patients get, getting episodes of atrial fibrillation. And then lastly are certain foods and beverages. And this is not a specific uh, trigger for, for everyone, uh, but there are plenty of patients of mine that know, for, for example, they know that a fried food meal is going to trigger episodes of atrial fibrillation. A particularly heavy meal is going to trigger an episode of, a, of AFib or spicy food. And so some of this goes back to being a detective, you know, knowing what you may have eaten uh, the 24 hours prior when you get an AFib episode may help you figure out what food you particularly uh, need to avoid. And if you're looking for diet tips, please look at my other videos for diet tips on atrial fibrillation. So hopefully with some of these summaries of these different types of triggers, you can help kind of learn what may trigger your episodes of atrial fibrillation so you can better know uh, what to avoid. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.